Welcome back to another Quarantine Edition Bitty Mold Supply Tutorial. In this video we're going to explain the process of taking a hand cast with AccuCast 3AD Alginate and then pouring a hydrostone positive. And we're going to do this with uh, the subject holding an object that will then remain in the alginate cast and transfer to the final positive. Now, uh, to explain some of the details, here's my seven-year-old. Hello, I am York, and I'm getting my hand molded with a spoon because I love ice cream and I love spoons. This is what two months of isolation has done to my child. So we're going to mold her hand holding her favorite spoon and then leave that in the alginate cast. So to begin, we're going to practice the way she's going to put it into the alginate. So we're doing this with a tube. This is one of our clear plastic tubes that we have on our website for hand molding. This is good for kids and adult hands. And we've just hot glued that to a piece of foam core board. And I'll put a link in the uh, video description to the tubes. Uh, those are really handy for hand casts like this. So be sure to check that out. And I'll also put links to the alginate and the hydrostone as well. Now, AccuCast 380 is one of several formulas we offer for hand casting. Uh, this particular form formula is unique in that it is a color changing formula. Now, the way uh, the AccuCast formulas are coded is by the set time and the water temperature. So AccuCast 380 is a three minute set time alginate formula using 80 degree water. Now, 80 degree water will actually feel uh, kind of cool to the touch. It's not going to feel warm at all. So when in doubt, be sure to check that temperature. Now, as usual, if you're new to mixing alginate, be sure to always pour the water into the alginate and not vice versa. And the reason for that, alginate powder is very low density and it has a tendency to float. So if you try to put that into the water, you'll use up a lot of valuable extra time trying to get that mix down into the water. So put your water into the alginate, not alginate into water. Now you'll notice we used a mix ratio of about one and a third parts water to one part dry alginate powder. I like to mix it a little bit on the runny side with a little bit more water than alginate. And you can vary that formula a little bit. You'll see the manufacturer's instructions suggest a, a weight ratio, but you can vary that a bit depending on uh, how runny or how thick you want that to be. Now again, you'll see that, that color change happening here. It turns pink when you add water, and then when it's about to set, it turns white again. Uh, it more specifically, it turns white about a minute before it sets. And that's again, assuming that you're using 80 degree water. So real important there to keep track of that. And one of the nice things about this for working with kids is they can see that uh, color change. And one thing is that's a novel color change thing they like to watch, but then also it gives them a very visual cue that they need to have their hand in position before uh, that, you know, once that color change happens, they need to have their hand in the alginate and be in the correct pose. So there you have the basic set time and the basic uh, cure cycle or profile of how 380 sets. And again, those of you new to using AccuCast alginates, uh, the cured set alginate here is going to feel about like a, a hard boiled egg. It's going to feel very rubbery, and uh, again, it's a really odd material. So I highly recommend mixing a small batch when you're starting out and just play with it a little bit and get a feel for the way the material works. Now here's my batch that we're actually going to use for the hand cast. Here we've got a little bit over a pound of dry alginate on the right hand side and then you'll see the water on the left hand side. And you'll notice I have about probably about a third more water than I do dry alginate. And again, just like before, when we mix the small batch there, we're always going to add our water into our dry alginate. And I like to add that a little bit at a time. I usually put about half in, stir that a little bit, and then add a little bit more, stir it, and add the rest. And you can also use a mechanical mixer. We've got some videos that explain that process too. You can always use a Jiffy mixer on a drill and that's great for mixing. But real important, when you're using mixers, sometimes you don't get into the corners of the bucket really well. So sometimes you still have to follow up with some hand mixing to make sure you don't have any little pockets of dry powdered alginate that hasn't mixed in water. 
Now, it's real important to remember that the alginate is stupid. It does not know what you intend to do with it, and it starts its chemical process, its setting time process, as soon as the water touches the alginate. So remember, your mixing time is part of that working time. As soon as the water touches the alginate, the clock starts ticking. So be sure to get that all stirred up and poured as soon as possible. You'll notice here that uh, it's already starting to turn uh, more of a, an off-white color. So we have just enough time for little Rourke here to stick her hand down. And you might have seen this in some of our other videos. What I like to do is have them push their hand all the way down to the bottom of the container, pull it out, and then I rub it into the detail of their hand and then have her plunge her hand back down into the alginate. And that extra little step of having her pull their hand out and rubbing that into the detail of their hands, that eliminates a lot of surface bubbles. Now one thing you'll notice that I left that alginate on my hands to set. And the reason for that is twofold. One, if you run to a sink and try to wash that off, you just make a huge mess. And uh, it's much easier to clean off if you just let it set up and peel it off. But the other thing too is I like to let, especially when I'm working with children, I like to let them feel what that's like going off and let them peel some of that off my hands so they can see what it's like when it's set. But that's a great built-in timer for you and for your subject to see when that's set up. So when it's set up on your hands, you know that it's set up inside the mold. So now we're ready to carefully demold the uh, alginate mold from her hand. And to do that, we're going to break that suction around the top. And one thing I like to do is uh, have the subject just wiggle her hand. You'll see I'm going to gesture to her about wiggling her hand to help break that suction and explaining to them that really suction is the only thing holding their hand in the mold at this point. So real important for your model to be patient and just carefully ease out of that mold. If they get panicked and they start yanking on that mold, they they could bruise their hand, but also they could rip that mold. And at this point, you have a good mold, so you don't want to risk it by having someone freak out and try to rip their way out of the mold. So very carefully have them wiggle their fingertips and then carefully let gravity and just slight pressure pull their hand right out of the mold. And there she's free and now ready to cast. Now, real important here to make sure that any little stray bits of alginate don't fall down into the mold. So we wanna make sure we pull any of those little stringy little bits and drips, pull those out and make sure they don't fall down into the hand. And if they do, flip that mold upside down and shake it out. And make sure you get all the little alginate bits that might fall into the mold, shake those out as soon as possible. Because you don't want to mess up an otherwise good cast by having little bits of alginate debris blocking your hydrostone from getting into all of the fingers. Which brings us to the mixing of hydrostone. I'm going to show the simplest approach to mixing hydrostone. This is the way I typically mix up for hands. This is a pretty straightforward, easy method. I use roughly three parts of dry hydrostone to one part water. Now, USG, the manufacturer of hydrostone, recommends that you use a mechanical mixer, uh, like a Jiffy mixer on a drill to mix this. and. Uh, I recommend stirring this like this with a drill at high speed for at least a minute or two to make sure you get all the clumps out and you get a very nice smooth consistency. And you'll find the longer you mix, the stronger, the better end product you get with your hydrostone. So we want to make sure we mix that up really well and then we're ready to cast. And one thing you want to be really careful about is remembering the position of the hand inside that alginate mold because here we have fingers that are curled up that are going to be prone to trapping air bubbles. So we want to minimize trapping air as much as possible by tilting the mold around and kind of burping those air bubbles out of those fingertips. So real important to remember where those fingertips are. And when in doubt, you can always write notes on that baseboard of uh, foam core and keep track of exactly what that hand position is. So here we're uh, filling it up about halfway and then I'm tilting it over and shaking it a little bit to, to get those air bubbles out of the fingertips. Now again, there's always going to be some level of uh, little air bubbles or something in the cast that might need some repair, but best to minimize that at this step. The better you do on your casting, the less uh, cleanup work that you have to do later on. 
Now, once we've poured in our hydrostone, we're ready to do step away and let that set completely. Now, hydrostone gets to full strength where you can demold it. I typically let it sit for at least a couple of hours, but the main thing I like to see it do is go through that hot stage where it gets really hot and it'll actually, you'll see some steam coming off the back and then gets back down to room temperature again. So after that temperature spike and once it returns down to room temperature, then you're ready to demold. Now this is a good time to also bring up the lifespan of an alginate mold. Alginate is a seaweed derivative. It is an organic material that uh, will dry out and actually mildew and grow mold if you're not careful. So make sure to get the best accuracy on your part. You want to cast into this alginate mold within about an hour of making the mold for your best accuracy. And if you're in a really dry climate where uh, the the dry air is uh, pulling the moisture out of the alginate really fast, then you might even want to cast even faster than that. But I recommend casting at least within about an hour of making that mold. If you wait too long and the moisture starts drying out of the mold, it will start to shrink and distort. And here at our in our showroom of our shop, if you're ever here locally, uh, you'll see on our shelf where we keep all our alginate products, you'll see one of our old alginate molds that we just went ahead and let dry out. And it's about a third of the original size. So real important there, cast as soon as you can because this is a disposable throwaway mold so it needs to be used as soon as possible. Now for a hydrostone cast we want to be real careful to pull away the alginate in a way that doesn't accidentally break our fingers. So you'll notice there I'm scoring that and I'm being very careful not to go too deep with that razor knife uh, into the alginate but I'm just scoring it all around so I could pull it off in little chunks. And ideally a wood tool is even better. Here since I'm doing a kid's hand I know I've got a fair amount of depth of alginate to cut into to score it but if you're doing an adult hand and you're concerned about accidentally hitting the hand, use a wooden tool like a popsicle stick and use that to check for the depth of where the hand is. And take your time with this step. If you rush this, that's a, a real quick way to break off all of those fingertips if you're trying to rush this and pull this out and prying that alginate off. And then you wind up having to glue all those fingers back in place. So take your time peeling off those alginate chunks and just carefully work that away. Now, real important here also is if you wait too long to demold, if you were to leave the hydrostone hand in the alginate for several days, it'll be very difficult to remove. The alginate will start to dry out and shrink and it'll really grab that hydrostone tight and it'll be very difficult to remove without breaking the hydrostone. And in some cases, if it starts to mold, that mold might start growing in the hydrostone and ruin your cast. So take care to demold in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, so there is our hydrostone hand, and you'll notice that we've left the spoon now, so we, we have the hand holding a spoon, and it makes for a great little tabletop art piece, reminding little Rourke of her spoon that she loves to eat ice cream with so much. And now we just need to do a little bit of cleanup, just uh, removing some uh, little Audi air bubbles and filling in some little air bubbles on the fingertips. Now I'm just going to do a quick overview of filling in the air bubbles here. I usually use a dental tool to shape that plaster as I'm reconstructing any little fingertips or air bubbles and use little dental tools or steel tools to scrape off any air bubbles. And you want to do that when the material is fairly green or fairly new uh, to make cleanup fairly easy. And then I let it dry for a few days and then I'm ready for a paint job. Now, if you want to see the bubble filling process in more depth, I'm going to put a link at the end of this video to a video that, that focuses solely on repairing hand casts like this. So be sure to check that out at the end. I'll put a link there for that video. And also, I'm going to put a link in the video description to a page on our website that has a more extensive playlist of uh, videos covering all different aspects of life casting and hydrocal and hydrostone casting. So be sure to check that out as well as the full video library page on our website. And as usual, all the supplies are available on our website at brickintheyard.com. You can find the links in the video description. And there on the upper right hand, be sure to check out that video on filling air bubbles. That's a very helpful knowledge if you do any kind of plaster work. Thanks again for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, and of course, click that bell icon so you're notified anytime we create new content.